intervention, which is the basilica. But uh, uh, this intervention sometimes can re. Uh, be, uh, can be really useful. Uh, the idea is to guide you through a step-by-step -step technique uh, through the use uh, of some uh, cases that I've been doing in the past and to share with you uh, uh, some of these cases by showing how the te technique is done. First of all, what is the Basilica technique? Basilica is an acronym and it stands for bioprosthetic or native aortic scallop intentional laceration to prevent iatrogenic coronary artery obstruction. It's a very complex name. The idea behind this name is quite simple. Uh, actually, the basilica lacerates fully the, uh, either the native of the, or the bioprosthetic aortic valve leaflets through the use of transcatheter electrosurgery, through the use of radio frequency, so that uh, you fully cut a leaflet and once you do uh, a valve in valve TAVI, the open leaflet is not going to uh, occlude uh, the coronary artery. The steps to carry out these procedures are multiple. Uh, I think we can uh, briefly summarize them in obviously vascular access. Uh, you need to uh, place a snare inside the LVOT uh, and also to place another system, which is called transverse, traversal system, uh, behind the leaflet, between the uh, degenerated aortic leaflet and the aortic wall. We're going to see this more in detail in a second, but this is just to convey you, to give you an idea of, of the steps. After the two systems are in place, so the snare and traversal system, uh, uh, you have to, uh, to actually pierce the leaflet with the use of an el electrified O14 guide wire, which then gets snared inside the LVOT. And after forming a special uh, V-shape onto uh, the O14 guide wire, you electrify for the second time the guide wire and you, uh, by using this energy and by pulling on the uh, both uh, systems, you uh, create this leaflet laceration. And after this, you complete your valve in valve TAVI. A, a, a very important recommendation is to uh, download this article. It's on your intervention. I think it's uh, uh, free for download and it's really, really useful in describing all the steps. Uh, actually, uh, each time I do a basilica, the, at least the first times I, I, I did a basilica, I always went through this article, which is very practical, very helpful, and details uh, uh, all the steps and has a lot of useful tips and tricks uh, uh, for doing this uh, complex technique. So I will uh, share with, with you this uh, case that I have done, and I will also uh, detail every step uh, on, on the Basilica technique through, uh, uh, by going through uh, the different uh, steps uh, that uh, I've been doing in this case. This case is a patient, an 81 years old patient with uh, type two diabetes, uh, diabetes. He has been uh, treated with a bare metal stents 20 years prior on the right coronary artery for an inferior MI. Uh, a few years later, 10 years later, after the stent, he underwent a, a, a surgical aortic valve replacement with the implementation of a trifecta 23 uh, millimeter valve. And uh, at, in August 21, uh, an echo showed the bioprosthetic degeneration with a very elevated uh, aortic gradient across the device, which was not obviously present at baseline, uh, with 46 millimeters of mercury across the trifecta device. He was very symptomatic for shortness of breath. He was in uh, New York heart class three. So the uh, plan with, uh, was to do a valve in valve with the left basilica, so a single leaflet basilica, which is much simpler than a, a, a right uh, coronary, um, li right leaflet basilica, and that which is simpler than a bilateral uh, basilica. So the recommendation is to start definitely with the left basilica and then proceed to a right basilica before attempting a double uh, simultaneous basilica. This is the CT scan of our patient. Uh, you see that uh, the uh, valve to coronary is 
close to the uh, in inferior uh, acceptability margin, which is 4.0 millimeters. We have maybe a, a slightly higher uh, va uh, valve to coronary for the right coronary artery and a slightly lower uh, valve to coronary for the left, which was only 3.6. And also, as you see on the panel on the right, the left coronary height was very low, 3.1 millimeter, uh, whereas the right coronary was slightly larger. But also another thing that you have no to notice that the valve, the um, aortic valve uh, uh, is slightly eccentric. You see it's more implanted towards the left coronary ar uh, right artery and probably the right coronary has a little bit more of space. This is the reason why we, we perform only a left basilica uh, in this uh, specific patient. Another thing that you have to uh, take into account before uh, during planning of your valve in valve cover is the uh, shape and the size of the sinuses as Ricardo was showing very clearly and very nicely in his talk before. Uh, you have, can have different conditions. You can have a face, the sinuses. Uh, this is the first of all the condition where the uh, bioprosthetic leaflet extend above the SDJ as it was in this specific patient that we treated. And in, in this case, you can have a white SDJ with white sinuses, which poses no problem of coronary obstruction. You can have effaced sinuses uh, where there is a high risk of coronary obstruction. And in this case, we had slightly lier, li, uh, larger sinuses, but we have a very tarrow, narrow sorry, SDJ. You see the minimal diameter is uh, 21 millimeter and the uh, valve to SDJ distance is below 2.5 millimeters. So there is a high risk of sinus sequestration. This is why this patient needs to be protected uh, either with chimney or uh, with basilica. This is a complex algorithm published by Giuseppe Tarantini and Danit Ver, uh, considering the um, basilica versus conventional tower in relation to uh, the uh, valve to coronary ra uh, ratio and in relation to the narrowness of the SDJ. Our patient was uh, anyway, even according to this algorithm, was uh, uh, recommended to be treated with a, a basilica. So let's go through the steps of the basilica uh, technique we can have some discussion later some of these steps might appear a little bit confusing but again uh, the paper is really clear uh, and easy and gives a lot of recommendation about the different steps. Uh, you see on the left a baseline uh, angiography and you clearly see how the device, uh, the, the generated device extends above the SDJ uh, and the, both coronaries are quite low. The first step is to uh, place your snare in the LVOT. Uh, you have to choose a snare which is approximately the size of your LVOT or slightly larger. In this case, we chose a 20 uh, millimeter snare. Another thing is to place a backup wire in your LVOT. You can use an 0.25 wire uh, in order to maintain access to the left ventricular cavity in case you lose access uh, during the snaring maneuvers to the, uh, to the uh, LV cavity. In this case, we decided to use a, a, a seven French destination sheath from the uh, femoral artery directly inside our uh, LV cavity uh, in order to uh, ease uh, the, uh, all the maneuver, the snaring maneuvers. Another thing which is very much important for the uh, basilica is the transversal system. The transversal system, uh, you, you're going to see how it is performed later. It's a, a sort of a, a child in mother device. Uh, first of all, you have to choose a guiding catheter, either a 7 French or an 8 French guiding catheter, which is usually an amplatz left or a short extra backup EBU catheter. In this case, we chose but, uh, a, 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 an EBU 3.5 7 French catheter. And inside this catheter, we used a diagnostic uh, six or five French Judkins right catheter. The combination of this guiding catheter and uh, uh, this diagnostic catheter is what simplifies the basilica. You have to attempt 
uh, with different uh, configuration. You can use Amplus left and the memory catheter. You can choose an EBU and a Judkins uh, five, six uh, uh, catheter, because really the, uh, this is the combination which makes the procedure easy. And there is no fixed rule you have to explore. The concept is that you have to have uh, your uh, uh, transversal catheter uh, placed at the right spot. The right spot is in the bottom uh, on the uh, in, at the bottom of the uh, cusp that you need to uh, to cut in the center of the cusp. So, so you have to have a correct orientation with the tip of your uh, Judkins catheter point, pointing obviously towards the leaflet. Uh, you have to have a good depth. You must not be too high or too low. Uh, and you have to be exactly at the bottom of the cusp and you have to have a nice attack angle because the attack angle is what determines the uh, traversal angle of your, uh, of your leaf. So this is absolutely important and this is done by uh, choosing the right combination. You have to use two perpendicular views. Uh, one is uh, similar, I would say, to the uh, cusp overlap view, and the other is similar to the three cusp view. And you have to correct your angles in this view. But you need to check in both views that you are exactly at the bottom of your, cat of your uh, cusp with a nice angle. This is again a summary of how the leaflet transversal system appears. So it's an uh, eight French uh, uh, amplats left or extra back cat catheter uh, in, uh, with a diagnostic catheter, which has to be longer than your, uh, your uh, guiding catheter. So you need to choose a 125 centimeters catheter, either an internal mammary or a Judkins right with a long curve, either five or six. Inside this, you have to place a, a fine cross 130 centimeters. We don't have the piggyback system in Europe. So this is why we use a fine cross, which is a, a micro catheter, which supports the use of an O14 guide wire. Uh, we, the recommended guide wire for transversal is the Astato XS20 300 centimeters in length. You have to electrify your system, and this is done by peeling away with a scalp at the back end of your Astato guide wire in order to expose the metal portion behind it. And to, uh, you need to clamp to secure an electric scalpel with a hemostat to the uh, peeled away portion of your uh, Astato guide wire. And you have to set your uh, radio frequency generator, your electric scalper generator uh, to uh, energies which are between 50 and 80 watts. So really a high energy delivery, all concentrated on the tip of your O14 uh, guide wire. After this, you uh, need to uh, traverse the leaflet. This is done easily by electrifying uh, your uh, back end of the catheters and crossing the leaflet. Usually th this crossing, unless you have a lot of calcification, this crossing step is very easy and the wire goes like a hot, uh, uh, a hot knife into the butter. It's very, uh, very easy to cross once you electrify the catheter. And uh, you can confirm on echo that you uh, actually crossed at the right spot, but this is not uh, mandatory. If you are accurate with ANJO, you can do an ANJO only uh, procedure. After this, there are some techniques. Either you snare directly your Astato guide wire. Uh, in this case, since we uh, were, uh, we didn't have an Astato XS20, but we use an, an XS40, which was too stiff to be snared through the catheter. Uh, since we didn't have a, 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 the uh, correct uh, guide wire, we used a, another uh, trick and we uh, basically chose uh, uh, the uh, to advance a fine cross uh, over here and to, we used a BMW 300 uh, centimeters uh, uh, across the uh, uh, fine cross, which we easily snared. After this step, you need to uh, uh, bend your 300 centimeters guide wire and to advance it uh, in the traversal system while the other operator pulls out the uh, tip of the 300 centimeters guide wire with the snare, and you have to be very synchronized and very simultaneous. And uh, once your V shape, where you bent uh, your 
300 centimeter and you scraped off the, the cover of your 300 centimeters wide, when, when this band reaches the bottom uh, of the leaflets, you are ready to give uh, electric energy and to leave uh, and to give uh, uh, to do the laceration. You see that you need to uh, generate uh, energy uh, over here, and the two operators need to simultaneously. Uh, pull uh, the uh, the um, guy both uh, systems in order to lacerate the leaflet. The pulling force is quite high, and again, the energy is quite high. Once you transecate the leaflet, you can uh, do a check with your uh, with your anjo if you want, uh, and you see that by injecting contrast, we see uh, that we actually created the laceration. We see some aortic regurgitation. At this stage, the patient can be stable, but sometimes the patient can also not be hemodynamically stable. So, uh, but this is uh, usually a rare occurrence. After this, you are ready to implant your uh, TAVI device. For valve valve cases, uh, we've, uh, we have an extensive experience with the portico system. Uh, we love it because it's a, uh, it's a device with not a lot of metal. Uh, so uh, usually the gradients are nice and also reaccess to the coronary arteries through the white cells is quite quite easy, so this is why it's uh, one, uh, our uh, device of choice for uh, valve in valve, and you basically implant, implant your portico device according to the standard uh, valve in valve practices. In this case, we postulated with a 23 millimeter balloon, and you see that the final result is very good. The depth of the device is, is quite nice, and also we took a final angiogram, and you see also that we have some material here in front of the, uh, of the uh, sinus, and uh, uh, probably if if we hadn't uh, performed basilica in this case, we would have had probably uh, an occlusion of the uh, sinus sequestration and the coronary occlusion. Uh, you can also check on echo the patency of the left main or by angiogram. That's, uh, uh, that's easy, quite easy uh, to do. And again, this video is somehow accelerated, but I think it's interesting because it shows what we did after uh, the procedure. We advance a, a guide wire into the uh, the left main, uh, and we were able to selectively engage, you see, again, the left main through the white uh, uh, cells of the uh, portico device. And again, uh, this was just to show that the, the uh, valve could be accessed and uh, through uh, the, uh, the portico struts and that there was no coronary uh, occlusion. And you see basically how uh, nice the result is without uh, any AI and with the perfect access to the, um, to the left main and to uh, the left coronary system.